Hey. Hello, Shazi Vizram. Hello, Hillary Swank. How are you today? I I am more thrilled than ever just to spend this time with you. So I'm awesome. How are you? I am too. Me too. I feel the same. Um well, time time is limited and I want to make the most of this. So everybody in the world knows who you are. I don't I unless they like live under a rock and I practically live under a rock, but I know who you are. How do you, how would you introduce yourself? Hmm. Um, I would introduce myself as a, it's funny, I was going to say a person, but I'm going to say a woman because I'm really happy to be a woman who is able to bear children, which is something that I didn't know I would be able to do. And I'm so grateful for it. I am a mother of two beautiful babies who are about to turn one. So it's a bit heavy on my mind how the time flies and just a year ago, where what place I was in and how I was feeling them and excited for them. Um, I would say I'm a storyteller. I love playing people walking in their shoes and seeing through their eyes. Um, and I um, am a dog rescuer and a human that is super happy to be on this earth and curious about all things. That might be the best introduction, I think, of all time. Um, so let's just <laughs> let's go ahead and say that's the best intro, intro of all time. Um, I mean, I personally am so in awe of... Um, all mothers, because I know it's, I used to want to be an artist, actually, and I, I would think that um, making art was so important. Then I started a business, and I thought, okay, well, making, having a great business is like a living, breathing work of art. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I had my babies, and then I realized the most creative thing one could do is to create new life. Um, can you share your journey into motherhood? Mm. Yeah, I am. Um, it's obviously so emotional, especially with what I just shared about them about to turn one. And I loved being pregnant so much. And so it's so interesting how for me that I didn't recognize what you don't until you experience it. You know, people can tell you like, it's the biggest love you'll ever feel. And I'm like, well, I I feel big love. What does that mean? And then you have them, and you're like, oh, this is what you mean. Oh. It's like this explosive love and joy, and it's more everything than I ever imagined. It's so fun, and they're so funny, and you just learn so much about yourself. But I remember when I found out I was pregnant, and what a surprise it was and what a joy it was and what almost a disbelief it was. But then I was working throughout my pregnancy, which is a blessing, but also I wanted to be so present in my pregnancy that I wasn't able to really, because I was also working so hard up until like the second, third week of my third trimester. Um, and then at that point I was just so tired and just wanted to sleep all the time. Um, but, um, I remember then having my babies and I was so happy that they were here, but I also grieved not being pregnant. Hmm. And then it's not about day, you anymore. Yeah. That it's not about you anymore. Even though you're you or whoever is the center of their universe, it's, you have a new center of your universe. It's yeah. To... And then, and then it's so interesting because every day is kind of a, it's a letting go and a, and a, and a, and, and a new. So it's like a letting go of, it's like, I almost go through for the first six months, especially I went through like a grieving process of them getting older, but then just as excited about the new day that was unfolding. It was the most incredible, like give and take, you know, does that make sense? Oh, it's such a dichotomy. The more you can love is the more you can feel pain and sadness too. Yeah. It's, I, mean, I have a child that has um, issues and 
it's been a really challenging time. And I love him more than anything on God's green earth. And when he is happy, I'm on the moon. And when there's a saying, you know, like you're as happy as your your least happy child. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's also the case. But when he's happy, I mean, it is just, it is so, ma- it's magic. Yeah. It's literally magic to see your baby smile, wake up. And I've had the pleasure of meeting your babies. And Om and I are... They are, they're two little balls of magic. And Mm. it's, um, I'm just, I'm so excited for you to experience every single milestone and every step of the way. Because motherhood is, um, I think it's a role you can't prepare for. I mean, it's funny, I can't believe I'm saying this to you, given who you are, but it's like the role you can't prepare for. Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? It's it's funny. You're right. You can't prepare for it. Every day brings something new. Every, you know, every person is similar in some ways, but we're all unique in different in different ways as well. So our babies are going to be their own unique selves and we don't want to like pigeonhole them into anything that we've heard um and just let them evolve into who they are each day and each minute, really, um, they're learning so much. They're exponentially growing every day. What did I read from or, or learn from you um, that they're making a million connector neural connections every, what is it? Second. Every second. Second. More than one million neural connections every second. It's so fascinating. And I've always been fascinated by the brain, but like now, more than ever. And you know, that was one of the things that I think surprised me the most is that their brains are grow 80% of their, the max capacity from zero to three. And it's such an important time in their lives. Um, and I didn't know that there's so much you don't know going into becoming a, a, a parent or a caregiver. That's, Honest to God, that is why um, I started a diaper company, because I care about the time of babies in diapers, because that is exactly why. Um, Because I feel like we as parents, and especially me, we're talking about you don't know what you're going to get. I mean, uh, you don't know what you're going to get, but it's a gift. And then at the same token, um, if you you learn a lot and then you use your tools. And for me, it was, it's creating a platform, creating a business, but products that live in our lives every day and touch our babies every day. To me, those are the things that matter because you're having that time with them and that time is so magical. Um, so I'm just, I'm just curious because nobody really knows healthy baby. Honestly, yeah. we're like this, it's, it's our time. Yeah. But um, how did you find us? How, uh, t- well, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that story, but I don't know how many people since you said people are learning about healthy baby. Will you share? And I know you've shared about your son Zane, and um, you should also share about your beautiful daughter. But I, yeah. um, I um, was because you had started a company before this, but then was it? What, what, I know you just said you were so interested from zero to three and giving the babies the best from zero to three, but was there anything in particular that made you, I mean, was having a baby, what made you say, I got to do this because you wanted the best for them? No, no. Or did it come before that? Just the idea like every baby should have a healthy start. It's crazy. I was 24 when I started Happy Baby, and Happy Baby is the biggest organic baby food company, I think, possibly in the world. Um, And I literally started it because I thought that would be my way to make change. Mm -hmm. I thought if, if babies can have clean, whole food from their very first bite, it would improve our environment, it'll be organic, it will take so many pesticides and chemicals out of their bodies and out of our soil. And I could, even though I was young and had, you know, I just, I knew I could go all in mm. every day. I'll wake up and I will, 
I will go all in because I believe um, I believe in, in using business as a force for good. And that's, that's what I wanted to do. And then Happy turned into this big, huge, magical platform. And I'm s- so proud of it. Yeah. And then, and I had my own baby um, How old were in 2010. You How old were you at that, that point? 2010, I was 34. So 10 years after you started a baby company, you had your baby. Kind of. It's kind of like having a baby and then having a human yeah. one. Yeah. You yeah. know? Um, and then. But I find it beautiful that you, you felt this, this, um, words don't come to me easily after having a baby, having two babies. Um, compulsion's not the word. What's the word? You had a. That, it's, well, like okay. a it's like a, a calling. Desire. Yeah, a calling. It's you like, had a calling, like a calling to make something for babies that wasn't out there because. It, what they were getting wasn't good for them. It wasn't healthy. It wasn't helping them become their best selves. And I think that that's so beautiful that it wasn't the, 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 the seed wasn't dropped once you had your baby. It was something you saw that was needed. And I just love that. I love that about you. You're a big empathizer. You see, you see where a need is and you're like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I want to provide that. And I just love that about you. You're like well, that with people that you meet, and you're such a gift in that way. I mean, I knew it from the second that I met you. Um, so thank you. That's very kind of you. I, um, I there is something about helping people that just makes me so happy. Uh, and w- I actually, with happy, happy baby, the first conversation, how it, the the moment was having a conversation with a friend who was going through a hard time and upset at herself for not making their baby food homemade from scratch. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is terrible. You're like one of the best people in the world. How could you ever, ever put yourself down? You just, and she had twins too, ironically, Mm -hmm. Hillary, Mm -hmm. and she had twins. And, um, and yeah, I just thought there's gotta be something better. And then I looked into it and there was nothing better. And with half with healthy baby, which is so funny, Um, you know, many years later, we're talking about 14 years later, I realized that I had done everything I could to change the food system. Mm -hmm. I, uh, when I first started happy, organic food was only 3% of the baby category. Mm -hmm. If you walk into a target today, it's 71% organic. Mm -hmm. And happy is the biggest brand in target. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, <laughs> it's not that, but it's like, okay, now I'm done with that, you know? And then yeah. with, I learned so much about development with my son. He has a developmental diagnosis. It's, it's autism. It's real. It's, um, it's severe, you know, I, honest to, I don't know if he'll ever live independently. And, um, and then I had my daughter who is this like also magical little being. And I've seen this night and day difference. And when to prepare for her, I did so much research because uh, I'm a freak, you know, from a research standpoint. And I did everything I could to th- say, well, wh- what could have contributed to Zane's autism? I can't control my genetics. What can I control in my environment from an epigenetic standpoint? What are all the things I can do to have a healthy baby? Because I already had a happy baby. And now I'm like, I really... This is, this, is, this is what it's all about. Like, health comes first. And I, with my daughter, I mean, the pregnancy and learning about everything from the Neurological Health Foundation, from learning about everything from the Neurological Health Foundation, NHF, I mean, the chief science officer would tell me everything I should be taking. And it was literally like this massive table full of different, vitamins and supplements in the different form and from the different, you know, and it has to be methylfolate, not folic acid. And there were so many things I learned, you know, like if you're taking folic acid the day you conceive, you have a 40% decreased chance of having a child with a neurological disorder. It, you know, every woman in this world should know that. Yes. Um, and, and by the <laughs> way, so let's just talk about the fact what you're bringing into this. I have two things to say. Um, one is you're not just, I mean, you're creating healthy babies 
from conception and preconception because what a lot of women don't know and I wish, I mean, I feel like I am, was pretty healthy, but I didn't have all the vitamins that, that healthy baby provides because everyone, you know, the people will first know you as probably a diaper company, but to think that you're providing a vitamin that is absolutely vital from the information you just gave, that's just one piece of the information, which we could go on and on. We could make a whole podcast just about the vitamins. <laughs> but the we thing is, is like, I didn't start, I mean, I had a prenatal vitamin, but it only has, it doesn't have the one that you, the vitamin you just said. It doesn't have that. It doesn't yeah. have methylfolate? Me, methyl tetrahydrofolic? No, I think it just had folate or folic acid, folic acid, right? Um, yeah, but what's interesting is when I have a son with autism, in the beginning, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. And we did this full genetic testing and I learned about this MTHFR gene mutation, mm -hmm, which and I have. There, and I have two. I have two versions of it myself, and um, I learned about how your body doesn't like. Even if you're taking folic acid, if you have that gene mutation, it's not bioavailable to you. Right. So you have to take this other form, which is methyl tetrahydrofolate. Which okay, so I I'm not. That. But my doctor did not tell me about that. I did my own testing prior, a long time ago, and have been on that vitamin my, separately outside of my prenatal. Because you're a visionary that puts your health first and has the the thing about the thing about this period of time is that it's really exciting. It's really overwhelming. It's hard. I don't want to scare anybody at the same token. I want to support people with everything I know Yes. because I know it's the most magical time from the inception of life to age three is the most magical time to shape a life. And we all want a healthy baby and you know, our prenatal a healthy pregnancy, a healthy pregnancy. And we want to be healthy mothers when we come out of it. Right. And, we, and that's, because yep, then and the real job starts. That's then right. the new role starts. That's right. And you have the postnatal vitamin, which is was non-existent until you created it, which I am taking. And my babies are about to turn one. So how long do you take a postnatal vitamin? Could, like, is it indefinitely? Can that just be my vitamin now? I I take it as my vitamin. I take our trimester four as my multi. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of pills, but it's everything that you need. And... Um, yeah, I mean, especially I would take it always if, while you're breastfeeding, if you're breastfeeding. Um, but yeah, you, you know, we go, we go into a lot of things in our life with, an, with a tank that's not full, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And for me, it's like I learned you got to fill the tank before you start this journey. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wanting to help people like fill the tank and then give them the products during the part of the journey that's so challenging because really... You know, the diet, once I, it's similar, like I saw baby food as something that should always be clean. It's obvious it, you can't not give a baby organic food. And then, and then we did it, you know, yeah. like together as a team, we moved mountains and we did it. And now you've and, created the, the body products, the diaper, um, you, well, you explain it, but I, but I, before really quickly, I also want to yeah, just say. Me. I want you to just quickly say the vitamins, would they start pre, pre, and then through your first trimester? Like, how does that work? How, what are the boxes? Tell us all the boxes. Um, yeah. So the, the vitamin, the, it's the only vitamin that has everything that the NHF thinks you should have. And they are cutting edge from a science standpoint. So there's preconception, trimester one trimester two, trimester three, and then there's trimester four, which is to replenish, um, which I love because you'll send me a text like with one of the sachets mm -hmm. saying that you just, <laughs> it li quite literally makes, makes my day. I, when we started selling the prenatal, when it started selling, I, I would cry almost every time anyone would take, I just get so excited because yeah. I knew you put so much, I knew it was going to help. Yes. And let's talk about the doctor that you helped create the vitamins with who gives those wonderful quotes that are in the back of the packets, which I love. Um, like every night well, I'm like, what, what's, what, what's Dr. Cowan going to say today? 
well, you know, you can now write quotes on the back of the fact, like as our chief innovation officer, um, because I care about your voice. Thank you, you. I want your voice on the back of the packs. And a lot of those, um, some of them are statements of things you need to know, you know, that I believe strongly that we all need to check our water quality, go to EWG, type in your zip code, make sure your water's clean, you know, while you're thinking of getting pregnant when you're pregnant. Um, I lived in Jersey City when I was pregnant with Zane, and there was, the water had lead in it, uh, you know. And you learn that, and it's like, okay, what am I going to lear- do with that? Uh-huh. This is what, this is how we're going to do it, and I. Um, so the the messages on the prenatal sachets. The whole point is to give you a boost or information when you're when you need it or want it. Um, it's there for you, and some some messages are just about invest in rest, uh-huh. and and some are hardcore, but and you know. It's hard to talk about chemicals in pregnancy, but nobody wants chemicals in their body. Nobody wants chemicals in their baby's body. Like, and case closed. And that's the thing that you're helping women and people understand, is the fact that we are getting these chemicals from a bunch of places, trusted places, that we believe people would never steer us wrong. Like, how in the heck... Would the FDA approve some things that were unhealthy? People just aren't aware of it. We think that whatever's on the shelves has been approved and been through testing. It's not monitored. It's, it's not it's monitored. Not. And, it's that's not. The, and that's what we really need to talk about because I don't, I really think the people go into stores and say, oh, of course it's on the shelf. Of course it's safe. But there is and that's, thousands that's of reasons why, why it's not. And that's why and, you said, I want to create something that gives babies truly a healthy start and makes them healthy babies after already getting pregnant is and through again more information from you was a placenta has microplastics in it from and people don't even know like we're just catching on to like how bad plastics are yet so much is still in plastic like i will go and buy soup from a store and they'll put it in plastic and i know i'm about to get microplastics you know there's sometimes when you can't get away from it but i'm so good about not but then the other thing we learned is when you go and get your coffee and they put it in that to-go cup there's a forever chemical in there that you can't get out of your body once you get it in your body these are in a polar bear it's in polar bears like that's yeah. crazy. And you know they're not <laughs> drinking coffee. It's in our world. Soap. It's in our world. So here's the thing. It's in our world. So what can we do? What actions can we take to give our babies their best start? And that's how I found you. Because I did my research, which I was very diligent about. Because I have health issues from the endocrine disruptors, which are all these things we're talking about which come in many different forms and in diapers they've been in diapers so and that's what i was about to get to which you know i mean i started in those diapers and then i went through my whole i mean they're in elastic which you i was in as a gymnast and as a swimmer and you know i mean to this day i still wear elastic because that microplastics are in that microplastics are in polyester which are are what I wear when I go skiing. And, you know, so there are some ways, I mean, now I wear wool and um, I find ways to, to avoid it. But my point is, is that I suffered horrible endometriosis, horrible, like debilitating, pass out type of endometriosis. I had a, um, they thought it was a tumor because it was so big. And when they operated on me and took the endometriosis out, their words was it was bigger than a full term baby's head Jeez. in my uterus. So it was horribly challenging. And to this day, it's, um, it's now better. But um, it was made it very hard to get pregnant. But the point is, is how much of that was still in my uterus? How much of those That's toxins? Scar so, tissue. Yes. So I then was like, I want to give my babies a healthy start. I didn't know I was having a boy and a girl. I didn't know what gender I was having until they popped out. But um, I know that 
you know, I know what the, the disruptors are now. And so I did my research on diapers and you're the only diaper company that is EWG certified. The environment, Environmental Workers Group, for those people that aren't aware of it. I don't buy anything without looking up online what you can type the product into their, their app and, and check it out. You're the only diaper, which means that you don't put the 2,800 chemicals that are found in other diapers that they don't disclose. I find this mind-boggling. And I get really angry that they don't have to say the ingredients. They list some of them, but they don't have to list all of them. So we don't really know what's in those diapers. Linked to human harm. How, is a, how are things linked to human harm cradling our baby's body from the first, the first product that ever touches them during the three magical years we're talking about? How could there be? And how can you cha- how can you make change when all I care about is is sh- supporting parents during a the time they're in diapers, and then you look at the diaper category and you realize these di- these are not good enough. And Europe has the standards. European standards are so they regulate. In the U.S. nothing's regulated. You don't have to be transparent. You don't have to list any ingredient. And I love that you recognize that about us because it's not easy to maintain that level of quality, but we do it because we really love our babies, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And you know what? And here's, like, I like, I love your babies. I want you to have healthy babies. I have and experienced things that I don't want others to experience. That is right. And you know that firsthand and, and people love their babies, no matter where you live. No matter who you are, people love their babies and they don't know. They don't know what's in their diapers. They think they're getting something good or they don't know what's in their their body creams that they're putting on or their diaper creams. They don't know. And the thing is, is if people just knew, of course they would make the switch. It's a no-brainer. And I'm angry with our government because of their inability to you know, limit these things that go into these precious new life. But the other thing is, I mean, the baby comes out and the first thing that goes on them is a diaper and they wear it 24 seven for three years. If they're absorbing all of those toxins, it's just a terrible start. So we have to get the word out. So I'm so happy we're talking about that today and we're able to talk about it wherever we go. And just make people aware. And I thank you so much for creating this because I would be, I'd, I'd have to have my baby in cloth diapers. And I know that with twins, we do have a cloth diaper and you do have a cloth diaper, (laughs) but you know, with twins, I mean, we go through 12 diapers a day. So it's a lot. It's, it's a, you know, I mean, up to, up to, I mean, it can be 10, but it could be, yeah. I mean, obviously it could be a, Really hard day and be 16. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, uh, doing that amount of wash, you know, keeping up with that as it is keeping up with the laundry is hard. So, um, um, and, and I find, you know, even with cloth diapers, cause I use them in, in, um, in a pool, you know, they're, they're not perfectly leak proof, but, um, I, uh-huh. um, and sorry, we do I have a swim. Know. We do have a swim diaper. Oh, sorry, we do have a swim diaper and a cloth diaper. Yes, you do. But people need this, but people need disposable diapers. So, women like you can do what you do and share your gifts with the world instead of archaically somehow thinking about the laundry. I want to talk about people's antiquated ideas around diaper cream and the idea of petroleum and things like this, um, that some of the chemicals that are in diaper creams that aren't healthy, and again, absorbing into those tender areas um, and how toxic that is as well. Um, Well, because I feel like proactively, if you have a healthy, it's like everything in life. If you start healthy, um, if your skin microbiome is healthy, and the baby hasn't developed a diaper rash because there aren't chemicals rubbing up against 
a wet skin, I mean, that's how you get a diaper rash. And it's like the most horrible thing. It's like, so we found that uh, many of our customers say they don't ever get diaper rashes. So if you start with a healthy microbiome, hopefully you're not even putting anything on your baby's skin um, to treat a rash because hopefully you don't even have it from the get-go. Mm -hmm. But then if you do, think of that open, that, that sensitive area. And like babies are truly like a sponge. Think of it as a sponge. Our skin you know, is like, our biggest organ. So you created a diaper cream um, that is awesome. I mean, my, my, my babies were getting rashes um, simply because they would, you know, in the night sometimes go poop and then they would, were in it maybe a little too long. So it would burn their skin. That's how they were getting their diaper rashes. And they weren't crazy bad, but they were there. And your diaper rash cream just works. It works. And it doesn't have all the pollutants in it that everyone says you have to have in order to make it work. So like petroleum. Uh, yeah. I mean, petroleum. Uh, it's petroleum, a you know, because you're supposed to slather your baby in petroleum after they sit in a diaper 24 seven, which by the way, every single diaper, ours is Ours has it in. Ours has petroleum in it too, but every diaper is made with one cup of petroleum. One cup, and ours is the the most plant based diaper on the market. It's at thirty five percent. It will be increasingly not get. We will have a plastic free diaper. That is that is my dream. You know take chemicals out of babies' bodies, then take them out of their environment, and then actually create an environment where parents feel good and are happy and are able to connect with their baby instead of worrying about those first two things. And um, to be clear, there's a cup of petroleum in other diapers. There is one, that is an average. There's almost one cup of petroleum in every single diaper, and diapers are the third largest item in landfills. And why would a big industry that's one of the most profitable multi-billion dollar industry change? Mm. Like, because it, it doesn't change unless someone fights. And this is what I love about you, is that you found us and then you and I connect on an awesome level because I think we're both fighters. Yeah. And I will buck the system. Your new movie... Ordinary Angels, I just, it is, you exemplify, the character exemplifies never giving up and fighting against all odds, actually because health comes first. I mean, it always comes back to it, but like you, if, if we challenge a system and we create something better, ultimately you raise the bar, okay? So we raised the bar. It didn't, a bar didn't exist. We raised the bar. Now, hopefully, in many years from now, you and I are going to sit here and we're going to say, you know what, 71% of the diapers at Target have no plastic in it. Mm -hmm. And then guess what we just did? We raised the bar, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So that's, um, I, I don't know why, but I just gave myself goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, me too. Because we're going to get there, we're going to make that happen. And that is going to change lives and it's going to save lives. That's why you gave yourself goosebumps. So thank you. Thank you for that. I um, also want to talk about the creams because they're also healthy and they you've added prebiotics and probiotics in them. And that also helps a baby's microbiome on their new soft and tender skin that is, that is so fragile and, and susceptible to um, unhealthy ingredients from maybe possibly other products that could be giving them rashes and other things that then are inexplicable that you have to go buy other things for. So thank you for yeah, it's that. It's like putting a Band-Aid on a Band-Aid and then putting another Band-Aid on it instead of addressing the root cause, which is to support a healthy microbiome on the skin. Yeah. Um, the, I'm, I remember when you called me and said, Om had 
a rash and you slathered him in our cream and it went away the next day and it made me really happy because we were just enabling him to heal himself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Letting his body, Uh letting his body do its thing rather than blocking it and with, and making it worse with, um, with dangerous and unhealthy ingredients. Yeah. Um, I also think it's important that people understand that it's not just the products that are going on the baby. By the way, your wipes are 100% natural, which is again, biodegradable, yeah, and biodegradable, and a bigger a bigger um, wipe, so you can use less. So that's less garbage out there as well. Um, but the thing is, is that there's also, I feel like. Still, there's a lot of ways people clean with unhealthy products because they, and I did it forever too, because we thought that the idea of certain smells meant it was clean and we were just kind of brainwashed into the chemical pharmaceutical company's idea of, you know. Sanitizing. Yeah. And the best sanitizer is vinegar. Like, I use a lot of it. But I also was really happy to learn that you created cleaning products. So you have your your um, laundry detergent, which by the way, I mean, we're just, I mean, in New York City, I think like three laundry detergents got banned because they are proven carcinogenics, proven. And this is, there's still some of those carcinogenic ingredients and others, they're just not as high as the ones that got banned. But why would we ever do that? Why would we ever use anything that could cause cancer in our bodies? I I call them chemicals, chemicals of convenience, chemicals of convenience that that were created, that were created 80 years ago. I'm not saying someone created them to hurt people. Uh, but we now know what we know and we need to take them out of the yeah, system. That's right. And that's also raising a bar because we don't need, a, we don't need those chemicals in anything to make it work, to make it clean and do their job. That's the thing is a lot of people are like, well, that's, that stuff's not going to work. Well, but yeah. Asha was putting everything in her mouth and I'm sitting there thinking, yeah. what am I, you know, I need to make make things and I want to share all this developmental information about the connections that we make and I'm thinking, and I, I want to do that. Meanwhile, she's putting everything in her mouth. They're crawling around on the floor. And That's if you awesome. care about a baby's environment, then go 360, you know? Yep. Um, and so, so we do have a, we do, I'm, I love our home cleaning system because it's a concentrate and one bottle makes like 17 spray bottles and it's stainless steel. So there are no microplastics, um, you know, because you can't avoid them all. And I, I, think that we if you know it's like changes like that ultimately you know one change at a time I feel like that's how you make a difference it's really hard to it's you can't just change the world um like this but we can we can change our start with our baby's environments and I think that is um that's huge and also just to talk about the fact that like you said you can make a lot out of the concentrate so you're not going out and buying 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 all the time you can make that concentrate go a very long way otherwise yeah you would have gone to the store you yeah i'm sorry but you would have gone to the store or ordered and it would have been shipped to you by amazon like 16 17 plastic bottles that's that right. you didn't need to ship around water that's right and you can make the concentrate stronger if you need. If you feel like, you know, the floor is extra oily or whatever, you can make, you can dilute it as much as you want or as little as you want, which I like as well. Um, and then lastly, I think it's really important for people to know, because I feel like as a new mom, the less I have to think about things I don't want to think about, the better, because it gives me more time to think about how I want to spend my time with my child, my child, children, <laughs> my child, as I almost said, um, with my babies. I want to spend as much time, quality time with them and do less of, of the other things that I don't want to se- have to think about. And one of them is going to the store and 
purchasing things or running out of things and being like, oh my gosh, I'm out of wipes, I'm out of diapers, and it happens quickly. It's on you before you know it, and then you have to take time away and you have to go do it. And so you have the subscription, which we definitely need to talk about because it takes one less thing to think about. You put your order in, and what I love about it is it comes with well, I'm going to let you talk about it because I love how you came about the idea of what's in the box. Um, so please share that with us. Well, the idea is, you know, you get your box every month and it makes your life easier. It makes your life less stressful because you don't have to worry because if it comes from us, I mean, you can tell I I actually really care. You know, I re- the the mission is pure. It's so pure hearted. So everything in the box you should feel good about. And it comes every month. And you can easily change size. You can change quantities. But it'll come every month. And it'll come with information that supports your baby's development or gives you ideas for different games to play that are brain builders and, you know, just different ways to connect that I've learned are the basis of kind of the birth to three program and the basis of development. And it's there. It's these things that I think parents, you know, it's one thing to protect the environment, but also let's enrich the environment. So to me, the subscription is about protecting and enriching. And you get these cards and you get these trays and they'll tell you about the power of peekaboo or they'll remind you um, that, or tell you, you know, use our dryer ball and roll it back and forth. That's baby's first conversation. It's a dialogue. You know, that's called serve and return. And, you know, I want to take all of this heady information that I've learned and just give it to you every month when you need it based on the age and stage of your baby. And that's the, that's the beauty of the subscription is my, my dream, and we will continue to improve it, is you have the best diapers ever that work. You have the best wipes. You never run out. And because you're not worrying about it, you can look at the cards, you can look at the tray, you can play these activities, you can be inspired. Sometimes you're really tired. And when you're tired, it's hard to be creative. Um, And also, I'd like to add that a lot of people don't know how to play with their babies, which I understand. You know, it's like, what do you do if you can't, you know, sit there and build blocks yet? Or how can you interact with a one month old baby? You can. There are ways, there are things that you can do. And so this also takes another thing that you have to go and research and think about out of the equation. You can be there and be present with your child because in your subscription box comes a card that says, here's some ideas of what to do with a one month old. Here's some ideas. Here's the picture. And a picture. It's like, it's wonderful. And I also love the fact that the products come, the cream that we're talking about comes in a, um, in a, uh, not no plastic by the way and your diapers aren't even in plastic but it comes in a cardboard where once you take the product out you put it back together and it acts as like a little carousel that has a little window and so all of a sudden here comes a penguin i love it it's called object permanence and it's like it teaches your baby resilience from the beginning of life you can be like look it's not there it's there. It's high contrast, black and white. They're going to look at it. They get obsessed. It was so funny. When Om was here, he was holding this thing for the longest time, just absolutely entranced by it. And it's, it's just the exterior packaging for our moisture cream. Which I bomb. love. So you just upcycled right there. You upcycled. You made a packaging a toy. It's, it's so genius. I love it. How am I as well, the chief innovations officer going to come up with anything better than that? Let me just ask that. <laughs> well, because I only want to set the bar higher and higher. That's why you're here. And clearly, you so you've done your research. And you know this is not like some rangy pangy little mom and pop show. We're trying to change the world. And you do that with people like you and your ideas and your knowledge and your ability to share them with so many people. It makes a difference. And you... I, I love, I mean, the thing is we get to brainstorm together and it will be so fun because at the end of it, you know, you see your ideas come to life. And then when they touch a family, when they touch a baby, um, you just know what? you're doing the right thing. Yeah. I don't know anything better to do with my time. I just, I haven't found it yet. You know, that's, I, I want to be with my kids when I'm with my kids, 
but this is the way I give back to the world is that's the way. Yeah. But yeah, why buy a toy? You don't need a toy. This is yeah. just we overconsume. And, you, know, you don't need a mirror. You can you have a mirror. You <laughs> you just need to be reminded to play with your baby in the mirror and you can read why. And Dr. Cowan, who's been a developmental pediatrician for over 30 years, is a Zen master genius. And because developmental issues are a challenge and one in six babies born, not yours, will have a developmental diagnosis. Um, and we're doing everything we can to proactively prevent that. But because parents are so concerned, and here in New York, you know, it's New York City, People hire, they try to get Dr. Cowan over to their house just to watch him play with their babies, watch their babies, just to watch their babies and give, give them tips on how to connect. And that's what we have. We have 160 of those videos because I've known the man for 11 years and he's a Zen master. And the things he has to offer to the world, everybody wants. And that's not fair for somebody in New York to pay somebody five thousand dollars to come over I'm, not, I'm making up the number but imagine it's a million a lot. you know it's it's whatever it is it's not attainable for everybody but like if we know why aren't we sharing it and dr cowan is there for healthy baby so like when you get the subscription you're also getting dr cowan's knowledge you're getting the wow and the how as he says it you're getting the you know why is what's going on developmentally why is that so incredible but then how can you encourage that and i think that um that's this to me that's the beauty of the subscription is that diapers are the best in the world we know that they work we know that the wipes are the best in the world we know that now don't worry we've protected you how can we enrich this time yeah I love that. And I've already learned. I, like so I just much did a QVC him. ad. <laughs> you know? but I learned so much from him as well. And I remember you showed me a video of his the other day and I'm like, I need more. I need more. I need more. So uh, about sleep, um, sleep disruption at age yeah. at four Not months. Sleep and progression, now. It's sleep progression because at this age, the, my babies right now, they're starting to dream. And I just love that. I love that <laughs> when you know, you can't unknow. And then it's like, you, you've, you, you're, you're getting to know your baby in another deeper way. And so you can help them. That's the thing is you're helping them be them best, their best selves. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for including me to be a part of Healthy Baby and a part of your vision. I am honored and I'm so excited about what the future brings for all of us, not just you know, you, me, and, and the company, but all those that it will touch. This is ex so exciting. And I do think we are going to make huge changes and raise those bars. Raise them, raise them, raise them. Uh, well, I am grateful to have you on this journey with me. I know we will be more successful because of your involvement and we will succeed. And I, I can't wait to have this conversation in 20 years about how we what we did. I, I can't wait. No. And that'll be crazy because my babies will be 21 then. <laughs> then we'll figure out something else to work on to change the world because you can't stop. But maybe they'll um, be helping us. That would be great. Your babies and my babies. Well, Hillary, thank you. Thank you for all this time. It was great.